The story begins long ago with the Otsutsuki clan, who were always traveling to collect chakra and genetic information. How did they do this? They planted a divine tree, containing all the necessary elements to gather all the existing chakra. The result was a fruit that compressed all the vital energy on the planet. Once they ate the fruit, the clan members could extend their lives infinitely. For a long time, the Otsutsuki followed this process, until one day, everything changed. Kaguya Otsutsuki, also known as the princess of the clan, came to Earth intending to repeat the ritual she had been performing. But this time, something different happened. She had a disagreement with the companion who traveled with her and was left alone with the newly planted divine tree. The area around the divine tree began to wither and dry up, consuming everything nearby, even people who approached out of curiosity to see what it was. However, most humans believed that the divine tree was something miraculous, as they didn't even understand the concept of chakra, and consequently, did not suspect who Kaguya was. In fact, the Otsutsuki princess lived on earth long enough to form a relationship with a human and have two sons with him, Hamura and Hagoromo Otsutsuki, both of whom also play fundamental roles in the story. Then, the day came, the divine tree was ready and the chakra fruit could be consumed. After consuming it, an immense amount of power invaded Kaguya's body and the princess became completely corrupted by it. She then decided to create the infinite Tsukuyomi, believing it was the only way to bring peace to the world. As a result, humans were placed into a deep sleep, where everything they idealized became reality. While they were kept in this illusion, all their powers were absorbed. With this, there was a clash of ideals between Kaguya and her sons, who were the only ones capable of doing something about the situation. The difference in opinions led the princess to awaken the Jubi, also known as the Ten Tails. The Divine Tree became an indestructible being, practically impossible to defeat. Thus, Hamura and Hagoromo, who had inherited abilities from their mother and the clan, decided to perform the Chibaku Tensei, a very powerful sealing jutsu that would trap Kaguya and all her powers in a moon in the sky. The princess was covered with many stones until she could no longer move, and so the moon was created. But that would not be enough. It was necessary for someone to control this immense amount of power chakra. Hagoromo was chosen for this mission because, in addition to having an extremely balanced mind, he had better capability in mastering chakra, given that he was a mix between Otsutsuki and human. As for the ten tails, only the shell remained. Before being sealed, however, Kaguya created a small remnant of her will as a final act of her existence, something that we later discover to be Black Zetsu. As a guarantee that the Jubi would not escape and that her mother's evil power would not be released again, Hamura decided to live on the moon, and thus his heirs, descendants, the Yuga, came into existence. But that's much later. In this way, Hagoromo decided to stay on Earth. He deeply desired humanity to have a more peaceful future. Of course, there were still many who supported Kaguya, who called themselves the Kaguya clan, but this did not make the Sage of Six Paths lose faith that there were other ways to achieve peace, quite different from his mother's. Thus, he shared with everyone the ability to use chakra, among other skills. In this way, Hagoromo became the father of the ninja world. People understood each other more easily for a long time. The Sage of Six Paths even wrote some teachings on stone tablets made by himself to be passed down from generation to generation. And like his mother, he lived on earth for a long time and had two sons, Ashura and Indra, one symbolized by the sun and the other by the moon, respectively. The two brothers were quite different from each other, while Indra was extremely powerful with great talent in the ocular chakra, having inherited the power of the eyes. Ashura was more Zen and believed that good practices and customs could form alliances, and as a result, good and peace would always prevail. It's also worth noting that Ashura is the origin of all physical jutsus, as well as the Kekei Genkai and clans that possess physical powers. Next, Hagoromo decided to divide his powerful chakra into nine parts, thus creating the Tailed Beasts, or Biju. These were neutral beings, created without any malice, before releasing the beasts to live as they wished. Since they were all spread across the earth, he 
He warned them that one day someone would try to use them for evil. But not to worry, because a person would guide them down the right path. Can you guess who that might be? On his deathbed, Hagoromo said that Ashura, one of his sons, would be responsible for taking care of everything he had left behind. Indra was not at all pleased with his father's decision. In fact, this is where Black Zetsu's influence first comes into play. He convinced the boy to fight against his own brother, leading to what essentially became an eternal war. But that's not all. Kaguya's remnant also altered the stone tablets that contained the teachings of the Sage of Six Paths, which led to great conflicts in the future. According to Hagoromo's logic, power was meant to be used solely to bring and maintain peace, not to develop destructive fighting abilities, which is what led to the creation of ninjutsu. The same thing happened with Hamura's descendants. They misunderstood the message their father had left and ended up fighting each other to the point of extinction. When Ashura and Indra died, their wills were passed down through generations. In other words, they reincarnated and continued to fight through their reincarnations until they reached two names that are very familiar to us, Hashirama and Madara. 80 years before Naruto's generation, the world was divided into clans, each with its own abilities, powers, secrets, and combat tactics. It's important to remember that during this time, there were no established villages or settlements. At that time, there were also no alliances, as the world was practically in a constant state of war. Many teenagers were already ninjas, trained to fight and defend their own clans. Additionally, the tailed beasts, or biju, were being used as weapons in an attempt to win battles. However, you might recall that not everyone was able to control the tailed beasts, right? That's where the Senju and Uchiha clans come into play. During a great war, Hashirama and Madara met. They were both just children and from different clans, but they didn't know that. Moreover, they had no idea that they were also the reincarnations of Ashura and Indra, so it was their destiny to face each other someday. Well, they became best friends and would always meet to compete in something, mainly throwing stones into the river. Since this sense of competition was always present, both Madara and Hashirama trained very hard and became extremely powerful shinobi in the years to come. But it wasn't just competition that defined their friendship. They shared the same ideals as they were tired of so much war. They eventually concluded that in order for peace to reign, an alliance needed to be formed. In their minds, this alliance would be a village where everyone could live in peace without worrying about combat. One day, Hashirama and Madara's fathers discovered that the two were meeting and decided to take advantage of this to capture and kill their enemies. On that same day, the boys met again, but this time to break off their bond due to the rivalry between their clans. The pain was so great that Madara awakened the first Tomo of his Sharingan. From that point on, unfortunately, they only encountered each other in battle. The battles became more frequent and both rose through the ranks of their respective clans until they became leaders. While Hashirama was considered the most powerful shinobi of the time, due to his natural abilities, Madara also developed significantly, to the point of gaining complete control over his eyes, even fully mastering the Mangekyu Sharingan. However, the excessive battles, which lasted for days on end, eventually left the Uchiha blind, while the Senju continued to insist on the peace agreement they had always dreamed of. But as time passed, this possibility seemed to grow more distant. Toburama Senju, Hashirama's younger brother, hated the rival clan. One day, he gravely injured Izuna Uchiha, Madara's younger brother. Izuna lay bedridden for nights until unfortunately he passed away. Before he died, however, Madara took his brother's eyes to regain his vision, awakening the eternal Mangekyu Sharingan. Well, there are two versions of this part of the story. The first is that Madara stole Izuna's eyes. The second is that Izuna himself asked Madara to take his Sharingan. Which one do you believe? Remember folks, that the former leader of the Uchiha clan was always an ambitious person with a thirst for power. Back to the story, with his new eyes, Madara could fight again which only made Tobirama even angrier. But Hashirama was very persistent and kept returning to the idea of an alliance.
However, after his brother's death, Madara was quite resistant, until he reached a certain point. He suggested that if the leader of the Senju clan truly wanted to realize the dream they had both shared, he would need to kill Tobirama as a way to avenge Izuna's death, and they would be even. But instead, Hashirama offered himself in place of Tobirama, which left Madara very surprised. After much resistance, the Uchiha finally decided to make peace and form an alliance with his old friend. Together, they began to live harmoniously, integrating the Land of Fire and founding the Hidden Leaf Village. In fact, other countries started to imitate what they were doing. They also formed alliances and became nations divided into villages. Let's say Konoha set an example for the entire world. For a long time, with various ideas and strategies, peace reigned among all. Each of the villages had a leader, and in the Land of Fire, this leader was known as the Hokage. Initially, Hashirama wanted Madara to be the leader. After all, they founded the village together, and it was the Uchiha who named the place. However, most people didn't think they could trust him, including Tobirama. Madara quickly realized what was happening and felt deeply rejected. In the end, Hashirama was chosen to take the position. The first Hokage often met with the leaders of the other villages, the Kegis, to discuss various issues, including the alliance between the villages, which was his idea. Hashirama was quite happy with everything that was happening. After all, his dream of bringing peace to the ninja world had come true. During his time in office, conflicts significantly decreased, but nothing good lasts forever. During the same period, some villages began to use the power of the tailed beasts to create Jinchurikis, people who had the beasts sealed within their bodies to use their chakra. Few people managed to control them, especially the QB, known as the Nine Tails Fox. But over time, the power of the Bijus was correctly harnessed by the Jinchurikis, and the villages began attacking each other again. The reasons were always the same, conflicts of interest, natural resources, and territorial dominance. Seeing this, Madara felt that he and Hashirama had failed. Thus, he started searching for other ways to reverse the situation. After discovering Hagoromo Otsutsuki's stone tablets, Madara began to change his mind, since they had been altered and he was being manipulated by Black Zetsu. Even without knowing Kaguya's history, he convinced himself that he should create the infinite Tsukuyomi and imprison everyone in a dream so they could live in a world of peace. Following his own ideals and distrustful of Konoha's leadership with a plan entirely different from the original, he decided to leave his homeland. It's important to note that no Uchiha followed him because no one shared his vision. Going from village to village, Madara began searching for the Bijus. He wanted to evolve his eyes to the next level, but no one was on the same level, until he found the QB. After using the Sharingan to control the Nine Tails, Madara decided to go to Konoha to destroy the village. He even had a plan to fight Hashirama to the death. This way, his eyes could evolve into the Mangekyu Sharingan. After all, it would be a pain from start to finish to fight and lose his best friend, wouldn't it? At first, Madara was controlling the QB with his eyes and covered it with Suzanu. However, it's important to note that he wasn't the Jinchuriki of the Beast. As a result, he couldn't maintain control of the Nine Tails for long, and Hashirama gained control over it, but that didn't last long either. This is where Mito Uzumaki came into the story. She belonged to the Uzumaki clan, known for their vitality, powerful chakra, and specialization in sealing jutsus. So the clan's matriarch, used a Fuinjutsu and sealed Kurama within herself, becoming the first Jinchuriki of the Biju. Afterward, the battle continued between the two. It was so long that eventually, both of their chakra reserves were depleted, leaving them to rely solely on physical attacks and Taijutsu. But we all know the outcome. Hashirama won. At one point, Madara bit his rival and absorbed some of his DNA. Many believed that the Uchiha had died there, but in reality, he used Izanagi as a way to avoid death. With this, he used the cells of his former friend that were in his body to regenerate quickly, allowing him to survive for many years. Before truly dying, he managed to awaken the Rinnegan and realized there was something on the moon, which he summoned, later revealed to be the shell of the Jubi. 
Madara then used the shell to cultivate more of Hashirama's cells, and thus the white Zetsus were born. Even without knowing how he would carry out the infinite Tsukuyomi plan, Madara formed an army of white Zetsus and began a search for the Bijus. During the time he was in hiding, many events and wars took place. Hashirama died, and Tobarama took his place as Hokage. Several jutsus were created, such as the Shadow Clone technique, extensively used by our beloved protagonist, and the Edo Tensei. Additionally, the second Hokage also established Konoha's police force and assigned this role to the Uchiha clan. Many believed it was a way to secure a peace, but in reality, it was a trick to keep a closer watch on the Uchiha clan. At a certain point in the story, Tobirama ended up dying during a mission, but before passing away, he entrusted the position of Hokage to Hiruzen Sarutobi. This is when another villain entered the story, Danzo Shimura. At the time, he envied his friend for becoming Hokage and began to create an internal revolution. In addition to being part of the council, he was also in charge of the ANBU. Without Hiruzen's knowledge, Danzo recruited orphans from various places to serve in the hunter squad and follow his orders. Danzo became convinced of the philosophy that for a society to be completely obedient, it needed a living sacrifice and a scapegoat. And who do you think became the main target in this idea? Exactly, the Uchiha. They were already a source of suspicion for the previous government and were never able to reach the position of Hokage because of this. As a result, discussions began among the third Hokage and the council about the possibility of making the clan the living sacrifice. Danzo convinced the council to proceed with the plan. Meanwhile, Hiruzen, besides being Hokage, was also responsible for training three great ninjas, who later became known as the legendary Sanin. They are Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Orochimaru. Each of them had a distinct personality, which influenced the paths they took throughout the story. Jiraiya was always impulsive and hardworking. Because of this, he often struggled to execute jutsus, to the point of ending up on the mountain of the toads. But this turned out to be beneficial as he went through training with them, perfecting his techniques. One day, the Toad Sage predicted that one of his students would be the child of prophecy. From that day on, the perverted sage began a search for this person. Orochimaru, on the other hand, was always very quiet and one of Hiruzen's best students. But after the death of his parents, he completely changed his personality, getting involved with forbidden jutsus and even deserting Konoha. No one knows exactly what his motivations were. Finally, there's Tsunade, who was always an excellent and tough ninja. However, she also changed a bit after losing her brother. In fact, she suggested that medical teams should always be available to assist those in need. During this time, she met Dan, the great love of her life. Unfortunately, with another war, Dan also ended up dying, which deeply affected Tsunade. But she didn't have much time to mourn because she was summoned, along with her former teammates, to face a great adversary, Hanzo of the Salamander. The enemy was so impressed with the talent of the three that he spared their lives, and of course, named them the legendary Sanin. Around this time, Kakashi's father, Sakumuhataki, began to be known as the White Fang of Konoha. As the Sanin were returning to Konoha, they came across three war orphans, Yahiko, Konan, and Nagato. Before talking more about them, we need to go back to Madara. Well, during the Second Great Ninja War, Madara was getting very old and he needed to live a few more years to see the infinite Tsukuyomi come to fruition. So he sought someone to take care of his eyes and inherit the Rinnegan. This person, in the future, would also gather the tailed beasts and revive the Uchiha. Black Zetsu agreed with Madara's plan. After all, it was halfway there to bringing Kaguya back. With that, Black Zetsu implanted the eyes into a child, who we later discover to be Nagato Uzumaki. It couldn't just be anyone who could handle such powerful eyes, and the choice fell on the boy because he was an Uzumaki, known for having a strong chakra flow. So Zetsu, now with both parts united, waited for Nagato to grow up in order to start putting everything into action. It's important to note that the village where the boy lived, Amegakure, was situated between other nations and was heavily affected by wars with a lot of poverty and hunger. In the past, 
a Konoha ninja ended up killing Nagato's parents right in front of him. This led Nagato to use the Rinnegan for the first time and he ended up killing that shinobi. After becoming an orphan, Nagato began wandering the village in search of food to survive. During this time, he met two other children, also orphans, Conan and Yahiko. Together, the three found ways to survive the chaos of war. At one point, they ended up in the crossfire between the legendary Sanin and Hanzo of the Salamander. Although none of the children were harmed, unfortunately, Nagato's papi, who had accompanied him during his days alone, was killed. After the battle ended, the three of them approached the Sanin to ask for help. It was at this moment that Jiraiya looked at Nagato and noticed the Rinnegan in the boy's eyes, the eyes of prophecy. With this realization, Jiraiya associated Nagato with the child of prophecy and decided to take the children as his students. After several years of training, seeing that they could manage on their own, the pervy sage decided to return to Konoha, where he also became the teacher of another team. And guess who one of those students was? Minato Namikaze, the father of our beloved protagonist. Meanwhile, Mito Uzumaki was growing old and needed a successor to carry the Ninetales fox within her. But she didn't want just anyone for this role, so she chose none other than Kushina Uzumaki. Both were from the same clan, but Kushina still lived in the village of Whirlpools, so she was brought to Konoha by some ninjas to take on this role. Unfortunately, shortly after the girl left the village, the Uzumaki clan was exterminated by other nations. Everyone feared the Uzumaki because they were extremely powerful ninjas and experts in sealing jutsus. Thus, Kushina became the second Jinchuriki of Kurama and also a citizen of Konoha. For a long time, she suffered bullying because of her red hair, but don't think she took it lying down. She always stood up to those who dared to get in her way. Moreover, she always emphasized her dream of becoming the first female Hokage. During this time, she met Minato. They were in the same class at the Ninja Academy and shared the same ideals. Even though she didn't show it, Minato understood her very well. One night, Kushina was kidnapped by ninjas from another village who wanted to steal Kurama's chakra. Along the way, she left strands of her hair behind in the hope that someone would come to rescue her. And that's exactly what happened. Minato fought off all the shinobi who were taking her and then rescued her. He then expressed how much he liked her hair, which had been so criticized by everyone else. The rest is history, isn't it? From that night on, they became great friends and a beautiful couple. Both grew up to become spectacular ninjas, especially Minato, who became known as the Yellow Flash of Konoha due to his speed in battle. Additionally, he also became the teacher of Team 7 with Obito Uchiha, Rin Nohara and Kakashi Hatake as his students. Around this time, we were also introduced to Might Guy, a ninja who didn't have special powers but trained twice as hard to stand out among the others. After all, hard work can also beat natural talent. Team 7 was very close and each member had their own personality. While Obito was always cheerful and focused on becoming Hokage, Kakashi was rather distant due to his father's death. As a result, he preferred to focus solely on becoming an excellent shinobi and following the rules with strict discipline. He made it clear that if it was necessary to leave his friends behind to complete the mission, he would do so. Well, we saw that this changed later on. Rin, on the other hand, was the intermediary between them as well as the group's medical ninja with great skills. During this time, the Third Great Ninja War began and Team 7 was frequently assigned many missions. Kakashi always stood out due to his abilities, and as a result, he received gifts from his sensei and Rin. Obito, feeling somewhat envious, did not do the same. Minato, noticing this, often advised his students to work as a team, believing they would have more success together. With that in mind, they were given a mission to destroy a bridge, which was key to ending the war. Kakashi wanted to stick to the plan, but everything changed after Rin was kidnapped. While Hatake wanted to continue the mission, Obito wanted to save their teammate. The two clashed and began to go their separate ways until Uchiha said the famous line, Those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Moved by his friend's words, they both set off to rescue Rin, but not in the way you might think. 
Obito went ahead and during the battle he awakened the Sharingan. However, he was about to be killed when Kakashi appeared to help him. Unfortunately, a tragedy occurred. A rock slide fell on Obito, crushing him completely. Believing he would die right there, Obito decided to give one of his eyes to Kakashi, asking Rin to perform the transplant while there was still time. According to Uchiha himself, this would be his gift to his friend. They couldn't retrieve their friend's body in time and were also out of options to escape their enemies. So Kakashi decided to use the kunai Minato had given him, which acted as a teleportation device, allowing their sensei to reunite with his students. But then came the plot twist. Obito was not actually dead and was rescued by Black Zetsu. Meanwhile, Kakashi continued to grow stronger, now that he had his former teammates sharing on. Since the death of his friend, he swore to himself that he would never leave anyone behind on missions again and continued to improve his skills. Around this time, he also created a jutsu that we all know very well, the Chidori. During that time, Sasori, a rogue ninja who had deserted from the village of the sand, assassinated the third Kazukage and turned him into one of his puppets. Itachi Uchiha experienced all the events of the third great ninja war witnessing the deaths of many acquaintances and even members of the Uchiha clan, which caused him significant trauma. Maito Dai, to protect his son, opened the eight inner gates and defeated the killed four members of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, but unfortunately, he died in the process. As a result, Maito Gei became even more obsessed with training, to the point of aspiring to one day be named the strongest ninja. With the end of the third great ninja war, all of the five great nations gathered to renew the peace agreement. This was, in fact, Hiruzen Sarutobi's only demand of the losing countries. All the council members were outraged and decided it was time to appoint someone else to the position of Hokage and who was chosen, none other than Minato Namikaze. However, this decision did not please everyone. After selecting the fourth Hokage, the Uchiha clan began to mobilize to carry out the coup they had been planning for some time. At the same time, Orochimaru was far from happy about this. After all, he had wanted to be named Hokage. As a result, he intensified his experiments and delved deeper into studies related to longevity, immortality, and resurrection. He also began spreading the curse mark among various ninjas, especially those who served him. This way, the Sanin could use the person's body if he was incapacitated or near death. And there's more. The Snake Master stole the graves of the first and second Hokages to perform some procedures, mainly with Hashirama's cells. Amidst all of this, a child emerged, who we later came to know as Yamato. It's important to note that these experiments were only possible because Danzo was behind them, ensuring that Orochimaru's actions remained undiscovered. As a result, Danzo also benefited from Hashirama's cells, gaining the ability to control a large number of Sharingans. However, the Sanin's plans were eventually uncovered by the third Hokage, who confronted him directly. In that confrontation, Hiruzen was unable to kill his former student, and Orochimaru ended up leaving Konoha, taking his apprentice Kabuto with him. Jiraiya tried to stop his friend from leaving, but it was in vain. Over the years, Orochimaru and Kabuto established several laboratories throughout the ninja world conducting various experiments in each of them. They also created the Hidden Sound Village and continued searching for suitable vessels to become Orochimaru's future bodies. However, they decided that the best vessel would be that of an Uchiha, which led Orochimaru to join the Akatsuki. But before we discuss the organization, we need to go back in time a bit. Remember when I mentioned that Obito was alive and was rescued by Black Zetsu? Well, he brought the boy to Madara, who believed this was a divine intervention. After all, who better than someone from the same clan to carry out the moon plan? First, Madara regenerated the part of Obito's body that had been crushed, thanks to Hashirama's cells and the experiments the Uchiha himself had conducted. Then, he tried to persuade Obito to follow him, but the boy resisted and decided to escape. As Obito left Madara's hideout, the first thing he saw was Kakashi killing Rin. This deeply affected the boy who, consumed by hatred, decided to cooperate with the plan that had been explained to him. Furthermore, 
Rin's death was so traumatic that both Obito and Kakashi awakened the Mangekyou Sharingan. However, I must remind you that all of this was part of Madara's manipulation, intended to ensure Obito's cooperation. To continue with the plan, Obito sought out Nagato, knowing that the Uzumaki would later be the key to Madara's resurrection. This has been mentioned earlier in the video, but I'm reinforcing it here. Thus, Madara's legacy was established. He was no longer just another ninja. As a result, Obito no longer wanted to be recognized by the members of the village he once lived in and decided to adopt the name of his ancestor. Meanwhile, Yahiko Konan and Nagato founded a group with the goal of bringing about world peace. The name? Well, you know it very well, Akatsuki. With each passing day, the organization gained many followers, which started to bother certain individuals, including Hanzo of the Salamander. To eliminate the Akatsuki, Hanzo decided to set a trap with Danzo, kidnapping Conan. When Yahiko and Nagato went to rescue her, the leader of Amigakure confronted Nagato and told him that in exchange for the girl, he would have to kill his friend standing beside him. With a kunai in hand, the Uzumaki refused to choose between the two. But before he realized it, Yahiko had thrown himself onto the kunai, killing himself. In his final words, the founder of Akatsuki asked Nagato and Conan to continue the dream of bringing peace to the ninja world. Yahiko's death caused Nagato to awaken the Rinnegan, killing everyone present, except for Conan and Hanzo, who managed to escape using teleportation. Subsequently, Nagato used his friend's body and through the Gedo, demonic statue, transformed it into one of the Paths of Pain, which would now be his pseudonym. After assassinating Hanzo, he became the leader of Omega Kure and the Akatsuki, which continued to pursue the goal of peace but now through pain. Shortly thereafter, they made contact with Obito, who intended to observe the group closely. Instead of maintaining the identity of Madara Uchiha, he preferred to adopt the pseudonym Tobi. With this, Pain, with the help of Conan, Tobi, and Zetsu, began recruiting rogue ninjas to join them. The number of members grew, and they soon became an organization full of mercenaries. In fact, nations that wanted to win wars could hire the services of the Akatsuki. It's important to note that each member of the group had their own goals, but the main objective was to capture all the bijus in order to control the wars, so to speak. Even though it seemed like the group was led by pain, that wasn't really the case. In reality, it was all part of Obito's manipulation to obtain the tailed beasts and begin Madara's moon plan, but even Uchiha himself was being used by Black Zetsu. After all, all of this was to bring Kaguya Otsutsuki back. With that in mind, they decided that the first biju to be hunted would be the Nine Tails. At the time, Kushina was pregnant, which made the seal that held the beast much weaker. So, on the day of the birth, Obito decided to invade Konoha to release the fox. After a brief fight with his sensei, he succeeded in his goal. And this is where the story begins for us, as we start reading the manga, watching the anime. The Nine Tails began attacking everything in sight, destroying Konoha in the process. Meanwhile, the fourth Hokage had to contain it, fight Obito, and save Kushina, who was dying due to the extraction of the beast. With little time to think, he made a very serious decision to seal the fox inside Naruto. Even though he was a newborn, Minado knew his son would survive because he was an Uzumaki like his mother. Unfortunately, after the sealing jutsu, Minato and Kushina died. Along with them, many others also lost their lives, including Iruka Umino's parents and Hiruzen's wife, forcing Hiruzen to resume the position of Hokage. To ensure Naruto's safety, the Konoha Council decided to conceal the fact that the boy was the Jinchuriki of Kurama as a way to prevent potential new attacks on the village and to protect our beloved protagonist from being kidnapped. But as we saw throughout the story, that didn't work out very well, did it? Additionally, the leadership of Konoha, along with many of the village's citizens, were suspicious of the Uchiha, as the person who attacked the village had a Sharingan, and the only members of the clan still alive lived there. Because of this, there was a movement to completely eliminate the clan. At that time, there was a child in the Uchiha clan who drew a lot of attention due to his extremely high abilities for his age, even being considered a prodigy. We're talking about Itachi Uchiha, 
Itachi always stood out at the Ninja Academy with excellent grades and successful missions. He was also training with his best friend, Shisui, who was also an Uchiha and a great promise. It didn't take long for the boy to catch Danzo's attention, who orchestrated various situations to place the Uchiha prodigy under his watchful eye. This way, Konoha would have a spy within the Uchiha clan to find out if they were really planning a coup. Then came pressure from both sides. Both the Uchiha and the rest of Konoha wanted secret information from each other. During this time, Itachi lost a teammate who was assassinated on a mission, leading to one of his first traumas. For many years, the clan prodigy tried to convince the other Uchiha that the coup was not a good idea, arguing that the conflict would escalate and likely lead to a new war, with many deaths along the way. Unfortunately, no one listened to the boy, and they decided to proceed with the plan. By this time, Danso had already taken Shisui's eye, which contained a very powerful jutsu called Kotoamatsukami, a genjutsu that allows the user to enter the opponent's mind and manipulate it, creating false experiences and making it seem as though the person was acting of their own free will. Shisui's idea was to use this to prevent the coup from happening. Unfortunately, after losing one of his eyes, he gave the other to Itachi and asked his friend to stop the war. Shortly after, he committed suicide. The trauma was so great that Itachi awakened the Mangekyu Sharingan. With this, Danso decided to make a proposal to Itachi. He told the Uchiha that he could prevent another war from happening, but he would have to kill all the members of his clan, including his own parents. The only person who would remain alive would be his younger brother. After some hesitation and ensuring that Sasuke would survive, Itachi carried out the Uchiha clan massacre one night. He then became a rogue ninja and later joined the Akatsuki. It's worth noting that Itachi had the help of Tobi, who presented himself as Madara, to carry out this collective extermination. Now that the Akatsuki had all its members, including an Uchiha, Orochimaru decided to put his plan into action and attempted to steal Itachi's body, but failed miserably. After this episode, he left the group and focused more on his own research as well as on performing forbidden jutsus like Edo Tensei. However, there was a twist. The Sanin had implanted Hashirama's cells into all the corpses he had stolen, including Madara's. This led to a slight change of plans. Initially, Madara would have needed to sacrifice a person with the Rinnegan to bring him back to life. But since Orochimaru had implanted Hashirama's cells into his body, Madara would return to life in his original form, so to speak, through Edo Tensei. Meanwhile, Kakashi was becoming known for copying his opponent's jutsus with the Sharingan, which earned him various nicknames, and was becoming one of the strictest teachers at the Ninja Academy. From this point, we begin to delve into the classic part of the story. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to receive new videos. We'll have more Naruto summaries, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out and watch the two videos that are on the screen.